Hey everyone, this is Nick from Mecca Warehouse and today I'm here with Kate and uh, we just celebrated our fifth anniversary of Mecca Warehouse so we thought it might be a good idea to sit down and kind of reminisce a little bit, talk about the the last five years and everything that is Mecca Warehouse I guess and that journey and, and all that kind of stuff and hopefully something good comes out of this conversation and it's interesting I guess to kick things off. Uh, we always said we should do a podcast or something. So yeah. It's sort of like that. Oh. I guess, yeah. <laughs> whatever whatever random stuff that, that you want to reminisce about or talk about, I guess this would be the, the time to do it. So it seems like it's been a long journey and yet also very short at the same time. Yeah, like, yeah. It's been five years, but it feels like that five years was, yeah. Decades at the same right, time. <laughs> right. So I guess a little history to kind of kick things off, right? So technically started in what, late 2018, before we became Mecca Warehouse, I started with the whole, like, Amazon selling thing. Mm. Didn't like doing the, uh, books. The, the books thing and was like, okay, I'm gonna try to buy and sell something I'm interested in. So that's where the, the kits and model kits and all that stuff came into, because I'd recently gotten into the hobby. And then April of 2019 was the beginning. When it became Mecca Warehouse, the website started to exist and things started kind of moving from there. And, you know, things were slow that first, you know, year or so, as you'd kind of expect, to try to build awareness and get things going. And then COVID happened and the, the quarantine proof your backlog ad kind of was the, the stepping off point to Mecca Warehouse becoming something big, right? This is a quick public service announcement from Mecca Warehouse. As you're probably well aware, coronavirus has been all over the news. People are getting worried about it, hoarding things. It's getting ridiculous. But I'm here to tell you that the surgical mask, probably not going to help you. Toilet paper, definitely not going to help you. Even rubber gloves, don't think those are really going to help you either. What will help you is Gunpla right piece of content, right ad at the right time. And I think I quoted as like a 10x increase in revenue over about a month and the number of orders and all the stuff that comes with it. So I feel like, and I'm, I'm just thinking about this the other day, I feel like that the order volume we got during that summer, a lot of the days during that summer were actually probably as big as our average days are now, except it was all in the house and it was all crazy. like. Not quite the same, but fairly similar. It was it was kind of nuts. Yeah, I mean, we had pallets delivered in the driveway. Right. And we right. had we had staged, you know, in our garage, like a sea of boxes to go out. So yeah, it right, feels right. Very we would we would similar. To right, some of the we days would we, we would queue up shipments to go out, and it was literally like my side of the garage was basically just yeah. filled front to back, like chest high. Yeah. With boxes, I remember like filling a UPS truck one day. Yeah. I think that was like a big sale or so, something during that. Those poor day. drivers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doing a residential. Res residential up. route and then showing up to to our house and you know, like, oh, I'm here to pick up the package that you requested. And it's like, really, I've got like a hundred. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good luck with that. For you on a quick tour of the warehouse. As you're probably aware the warehouse is actually my house, more specifically, primarily my attic. And so here we have basically the main part of the warehouse. It's broken into three aisles. Here is the packing station. And then on this side of the attic is all of our excess stock, if you will. So we did all that, and it was, I think, like June, right, when you kind of got involved. I think it was somewhere around there. It took a little yeah. bit of time. I was still trying to do kind of everything by myself, and I think I basically had a mental breakdown one night at like two in the morning and then you kind of well, I think jumped in and it started me. slow right i mean you have this talent with me and you like ease me into all these <laughs> dream of the minutes and then suddenly i'm just steeped in whatever yeah. crazy dream that you have um but yeah you i think we were helping you like bring boxes up and stuff right. because we had so much stuff the garage we had the two bays were just right. full of gunpla at some point and right. our cars were both parked outside yeah yeah because your side was full of inventory at one point mm -hmm. all the stuff that came in yeah and so i remember i don't there might have been some boxes that asher could probably help with but i think i was helping you like, yeah because cole was pretty young he wasn't as young as ember is but 
He was probably, what, two or something? One, two? I don't know. Math. My yeah. brain doesn't yeah, he's, anymore. Yeah, one, one two, something like that. <laughs> so he, was, he, was really young. he was pretty young, so at night he would go to bed and then we'd like help you bring a few boxes up to the attic so that you could yeah. pack stuff and yeah. keep you kind of fed with that. But but yeah, then there was the, the breaking point where you needed more help than just the occasional right. bring a box up. Right. Right. There was there was that and just trying not to like die from all the, the physical exertion of doing three flights of stairs with every single Mm -hmm. thing that we sold coming up and then back down essentially yeah and and all that but then there was just it became just keeping track of everything placing orders yeah, and stuff coming in I think in you were and, just placing orders and then like figuring it out later right and it was sort of how do we start to create a system for knowing what's coming in not right. double ordering something or right even just knowing what's showing up when is yeah it's became challenging so right yeah, those were, were interesting times. Yep. And yeah, so that was kind of the beginning. And then... I think I remember asking you, like, how were you doing this before? And yeah, you're like, I feel like I, get that I just kind of wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, I think you need a system. And yeah. came up with. Right, you figured that out. We and then we, then to we do. moved to Hooksit in basically the end of the summer, it was like September or something, 2020. It was when we got to an actual location, we had to get everything out. I was like, there's, there's no way that my garage is going to be full of merchandise all winter and not be able to use the garage to put a, a car in or anything like that. Am I centered in the brain? Am I this is why I... <laughs> Close, Should I step no. right or left? Uh, you're a little closer now. Good. That's good. Good. Sure. All right, hey everybody, this is Nick from Mecca Warehouse. I am here in the new warehouse, super excited. Got the keys uh, yesterday. So we moved there and we hired. We had, we had so much stuff. We were just bursting at the scenes. Yeah. We had, I mean, we probably have pictures going back, right? Of yeah. what the attic looked I'm, like. I'm sure but there be were great towers over all this of, all stuff coming in. But. And we had aisles that were like this wide right. to try to like squirm through boxes right. and get things down right. and we had our whole system and then the funky system of boxes that each codes. each box had a letter code on it and a spreadsheet with where all our extra stuff was that wasn't on the shelves and trying to restock the shelves yeah. and stuff like that that's like kind of what you would do like half the time it'd be like two in the morning i'm packing orders and you would be like mm -hmm. restocking shelves essentially and updating yeah. spreadsheets i got very familiar with the um ibo kits i remember like i knew yeah. Those were in like the IO box. I'm gonna go like find right. the Astaroth or whatever. And, right. Um, yeah, there were certain certain lines that I got. Yeah, got that to was. Know back those in the those day. were hilarious times too. I see those kits come in now, and I'm like, those were in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> those were funny times too, because I think we were both a little loopy. What like late in the late <laughs> was, at night? Yeah. Where lots of late at night. Fun times. But we play good music and. Yeah. We'd it was fun. <laughs> joke about stuff. It was great. Yeah. It was and then, so we were there in Hooksit for about two years, and it was, so it was 2020, 2020. So summer 2022 was when we moved here to Concord. And then this way is the warehouse itself. So we're early move here. We've set up a bunch of shelves on Saturday. Uh, it's a lot more walking than it was at the old place. Uh, these shelves here, there'll be one more row like this on the end, and then they're going to come out one more set towards the middle. And that feels like it was yesterday, but we've been here hmm. almost two years now. Yeah, how did that Which happen? is insane. It feels like we just did the move. Yeah. So, like we just recovered from all the work that was moving. <laughs> I don't know if we ever recovered, but that's another, <laughs> that's another thing. Yeah. So we did all that, and now we're we're here and doing all that stuff and I feel like we do a lot of the same things we did then just hopefully better for the most part or at least different try. right a lot of the same kind of like you're still ordering stuff you're still figuring out what to order and tracking all those things and we're just doing it all on a things. more complicated kind of scale yeah because there's more SKUs there's more products there's more more vendors yeah. and all that kind of stuff so it's been been interesting hectic at times but mm -hmm. also kind of fun at times too there's there's definitely yeah. certain certain things that are exciting because they're i don't know the challenge of it or whatever yeah that's i think we both like having a big problem and how do we break it down and solve it right. and how do we how do we make this work how do we make it better 
Right. That. Definitely. That part can be fun. It's also really stressful. Yes. yes. <laughs> I do appreciate that we don't have to lug boxes up three flights of stairs that's anymore. True. That that's is true. That's true. Big improvement. I, I guess that's a it's an easier easier problem to try to figure out how to do something than it is to figure out how to deal with tendonitis caused by moving inventory up three it flights of stairs. It was a real problem. Yeah. yeah. That's how we stayed in shape during COVID, though. All those, like, <laughs> was it Sazabi for Ka that we had just yeah. cases and cases and cases, and yeah. at least they were. Only two in a pack, I think. No, that, th those days, they, so they, they days changed they four, that. Those were eight. They were eight in a case back in the day, and they moved it down to four at some point. I, I feel like I, I feel like they in Japan decided there's some mind. dude in the U.S. <laughs> carrying these up three flights of stairs. We have to make this easier. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It was. I, I feel like they got smarter about that stuff, and I don't. <laughs> really it might hard. be because they were hearing about what I was doing. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows. I know we were on, on some radars in those early days because we kind of grew so fast in the, the, that first year. I remember hearing from our sales rep at Bandai that we were like the topic at some of their staff meetings and stuff. Yeah. So that's it, was, true. it was interesting. We were definitely like raising eyebrows and getting some well, attention yeah. there. Yeah, it was a pretty quick, like we were kind of nobody and then yeah. all of a sudden, right. who well, are these guys? Right. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah. Kind of nuts. <laughs> just, just a little bit. I'm, I'm a little nuts, I guess. I'm trying to do all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, did you have any goals in the beginning that, like, you thought you would end up anywhere close to where the company's at now, five years? Or were you just sure. kind of, like, shotgunning it, let's go yeah. and see what happens? I did, but at the same time, the goals were just kind of, like, lofty. Let's get as far as we can get and not so much super targeted, like we, we need to be at this revenue or this size or this number of employees or any of those like traditional, like this is what we want our goal to be. I think it was more, I knew I didn't want to be in engineering at the time. I wanted to do something else. I was burnt out of all that kind of stuff. So I wanted things to be big enough that it could support whatever else I wanted to do and not have to be, be doing those other things. So I think that was kind of, the goal, but it was also, it was also kind of like, let's just try to see how fast we can grow and how big we can make it. And like, it, obviously you can't do that forever, but it was, I don't, I don't think it was, it probably wasn't a smart goal in that it wasn't like, didn't hit all those kind of boxes, right? We're, we weren't like super specific or measurable or any of that kind of stuff. I just wanted it to be big enough that I didn't have to do it all, and that it would hopefully sustain a reasonable income and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know if you remembered if we talked about any of those kind of things back then. I mean, we had a lot of conversations, with finances and stuff like that. And right. that was, yeah, it was a big jump to go from engineering. We felt very like safe in terms of right. um, covering our bills and stuff like that. Sure. And then to kind of take this dive into let's see what happens yeah. was a little bit yeah it was an like interesting took steps time. and not just a complete dive but right yeah it was it, a little bit of a blind leap of faith and let's a little see bit. what happens yeah but you definitely needed a change yeah i was i was so like burnt was out at that point yeah i was not happy the engineering stuff you were doing so right give it a shot and this was something you seemed yeah. really excited about it yeah right and it it seemed like it was fueling that passion and... Right, right. Yeah, there's something about trying to run a business that I find interesting and, mm -hmm. like, entertaining. It's... I, I equated a lot to, like, certain kinds of games I like to play in my youth. I was big into a lot of real-time strategy games, mm -hmm. and a lot of it's, like, the... You're essentially managing the economy of your army in the game. You've got enough resources coming in, or you're producing enough units, so they're doing the right thing. And it's, it's a lot of that, like, coordinating all these different things and making them all happen. And that's very much what running a business is like. It's just you're kind of playing with real money and real resources and not, you, you can't just say, oh, no, nope, that went bad. Restart, which is sometimes you wish that there was that option. So it's a little bit higher stakes, but it's, it's very much the same kind of, kind of feel in a lot of ways. And trying to make all that stuff happen is something I enjoy. Most and of the time. And you're good at it. I guess. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I am what I am. 
Do you have a, like, a favorite memory or funny thing that happened or something crazy that happened or? Mm, I just, yeah, I kind of remember the whole time as. Yeah. It feels like it was forever, too. Like, in that summer, it was only a few months. it was really a compressed amount of time. But it it felt felt like an eternity. Like a big part of our life, looking back at it. it There were a lot of fun times that we had. I mean, there were certain songs that played that, like, take me right back to being in the attic. Interesting. I don't know if I could think of any of them right now. Yeah. Um, I remember the... Black Friday, right? We were talking right. about that story with coming up with our our really <laughs> like first version of the picking, packing kind of right. setup where we took some action-based boxes and lined them up because we were like, we're going to have a big Black Friday. I mean, it's nothing like right. these days, but it was fun to try to coordinate a first mm, Yeah, this Black was in Friday the... As a business. You mentioned the action-based boxes. That, that, was in the, that was in the attic, was it? Yeah, we had, or an, I don't think it was like an anniversary sale because we didn't. Yeah, really, it must have been something. What was that? I thought it was. It Black wouldn't Friday. have been Black Friday because we moved we out moved. before then. Our first Black Friday when did was we in move Hooksit. To Hooksit. That was like sub- July? September, yeah. August, September. So we were only doing. Yeah, the the attic together only together in the yeah. attic like a few months. Right. The one Black Friday we did at the house was actually. Pre-COVID. So was I helping hallway. you then in the attic? Then? I don't think because so. We weren't in the attic yet because that was December. We finished the attic yeah. in December. So that that was a fun memory, right? We, yeah, we finished decided the attic to do and... the insulation and stuff ourselves in the attic. And yeah. Had all the crazy glasses and gloves. And that <laughs> itself was interesting when they were coming up to install the, uh, the heat pumps in the attic. And we were in the hallway at the time. So there's, you know, this narrow, like two foot wide path to get through, probably break some fire codes or something. I don't know. (laughs) And then trying to bring all this equipment and tools and everything up to our attic past all that stuff. And don't mind all that stuff. And I think think one of the the biggest crazy ones was just that first time we received pallets at the house. It was like Mm -hmm. five pallets worth of stuff. That, that first time and so much of it was damaged and that was just like, it was interesting. We filmed a lot of it and that was back like, I had like a contract video editor doing some media stuff for me and I think I like set up the GoPro and I'm, you know, breaking them down in the driveway because there was literally no other space to break these shipments down and trying to organize just all that stuff. hope it doesn't rain that day. <laughs> yeah, right, right. We just get lucky that the, the weather was okay and because yeah. I didn't have a pallet jack or anything. I couldn't just roll them into the garage. Right. So we had to break them down that day. I just remember Yeah. just kind of the craziness of some of how that worked. Yeah, and worked. if that had been in the winter, like, right. how would we have done any of this? It just right. wouldn't have worked. Right. I, we must have had some kind of sale. Was it when we were throwing a moving sale or something? Because I can remember the a, action base boxes, and we decided to line them up. Maybe it was the and I would sale. put the kits. I know we, we started because like when I started, I, I pick you. every order myself, which was relatively easy because it, I, we were in you know several hundred square feet in the attic, so I could literally walk like ten steps to every. I don't need to bring the kids to school, so no. I think we're good. That's good. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I could walk and get to any individual item in the warehouse, warehouse in the attic, in, right. in like five to ten steps, and yeah. it was all memorized. There was no system for it, so I just knew where yeah. everything was and could just walk over and I'd grab the three things, then pack them, mm-hmm. and then yeah, it must have been like the moving sale or something. We had some sort of sale in the house because that must have been what drove that ridiculous we had like it was like a ridiculous weekend of packing orders in the house and then we like filled a ups truck in the driveway yeah and then we had to turn around turn away the first guy that showed up showed up with like enough room for like two boxes in the back of his truck or something because the uh the way we requested pickups was through Shopify. So you'd hit the button and say, we need a pickup on this package. And it wouldn't tell them about the other 200 that were sitting <laughs> next to it. So it showed up like, okay, I'm ready to pick this one up. I'm like, no, <laughs> you might want to call somebody. We need, we need more than that. But we, that was like when we filled the garage basically. So that must've been, yeah, that's, that's that must've what been I like, like, must've been like a moving sale or something. 
that would I, make I sense. I had to like practice, you know, finding these kits and stuff. Yeah, and, and I'd then, be asking you where's right. and you'd like you know, cue them up on the floor next to me, kind of. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. So right. we had our line of orders kind of set up so that you'd have a right the next one that you could grab and pack while I was looking around in the attic. And then at that point, things were moving fast enough that I'd have to go pull stuff from, you know, the other side of the attic right. <laughs> to right. restock the shelves. Right. And yeah, it was, I don't remember how we did all that. And we must have to shut it down at some point because we wanted to keep the boxes that yeah. were already packed. Right. So I think I remember we, we took, we, I think when we did that move, we took inventory that was like, sealed in case boxes or yeah. something and took it off the website and redid it all when it got there all sorts of craziness any hopes or goals for the future so i think for me the the biggest goal is to get things to a point where they just run again like back in back in january i took this full-time position again just to try to ease the the burden on the home life and not have to stress out about finances and let all the money for the business go back into the business and stuff like that. So it would be good to get to the point where I could make that choice to go back full time or not, but have that be an option and have things kind of either, either be there again and have things grow to the point where I feel like I can just do that or I would go to the point where we can afford to put someone in a position to just run it and then I can just, I don't know sit on a beach in Florida <laughs> nine months out of the year or something. I don't know. Not that I like beaches, but coming up with your next business, come idea up with the next <laughs> business idea or do whatever. I think, think it, it's along those lines of just get to the point where it's not firefighting all the time, hmm. which That's is exciting. part of running a business, but it'd be nice to figure that out. That I think is achievable in the next year. I think it's just a matter of, building up the knowledge base and all the people to be able to handle more things without me and then in there and then obviously just growth i would love to fill out this space and need all the space again or just get to a place where our throughput is super high like i don't i don't know how to quantify that but that's kind of kind of where i want to be is bigger better and easier <laughs> <laughs> similar I'd like to be able to step back a little bit more somehow and get back right. to I mean in 2020 what Asher was in kindergarten and I was doing kindergarten with him right, right. Like, I was pretty much his kindergarten teacher right because COVID and he had to um, stay home from school and we had the materials and stuff from his school and his teachers and right but I was doing all kinds of activities with him and I feel like that just doesn't really happen anymore right with Cole being yeah. the same age now so yeah it's it's very different it's right. looking back right things were simpler because it was there it was were there were like time. there were like two things in front of us it's like <laughs> survive don't get sick and die and you know keep the business running and yeah there wasn't didn't have to go anywhere. There's no commuting. <laughs> that that stuff was way easier. Yeah. In some ways, I almost miss it because it was easier. <laughs> yeah. It was, weird. it was it was chaotic, but it was simple. It was a while ago. It was here though, so it was I guess within the last two years. We did an interview before, and I probably asked mm -hmm. you like, "What's your favorite and least favorite thing and stuff like that?" Well, so, about my about job. about your job. Yeah. A job. <laughs> yeah. So what's oh. has that changed? Is it like what drives you nuts right now and what what is the thing that still keeps you like excited because I know there's moments where you're like yeah. this is awesome and then there's obviously things that are less fun yeah well like we were talking a little bit ago about we both like that taking a complicated problem mm -hmm. and trying to break it down and figure out solving it in whatever right whatever way that looks and so there's some creativity involved in that problem solving and i think i like those kind of projects i guess okay of trying to figure out here's the problem how do we figure out what we need to figure out <laughs> right meet some need i guess so 
Yeah, I mean, I was putting together a display order the other day, and it was it was really complicated because their product catalog is pretty huge. Right. And so that's like an example that I think I feel that energy of just trying to get all the things right. Consider all of the variables and try to put together what makes the most sense. And right. There's a lot of decision making. I I don't love decision making. You're more like the decision maker. <laughs> But I'm the analytical one, I guess. So mm -hmm. um, when I force myself to sit there and make those decisions and I feel good about those decisions, that's the part that I feel right. like drives me. And then when I see the order come in and I can go down the PO that we ordered and see all the stuff is moving quickly and it's right. doing what we expected right. and I can like make this prediction and then see it actually happening, it feels right. like the dream is coming to life. You sure, know? It's, sure. <laughs> that part yeah I guess is fun yeah, um, I think I enjoy that too like when you when come up with that when you come up with a plan and it goes according to plan or at least yeah. you can adapt the plan and go like right or you can like, see like the move was really hard and it was challenging and it was a lot of work it was this crazy thing when you moved here to Concord but yeah. at the same time it was like thrilling like here's our game plan yeah. here's how we're gonna make it happen here's our schedule here's all the stuff how it's all gonna work and we executed, and we executed that it plan. and then came pretty darn close to what the plan was like that kind yeah. of stuff's like exciting to, yeah. to figure out how to do something and make it work yeah and then seeing it work ideally right yeah <laughs> that's the part and we always end up talking after about like yeah. all the ways we could have done this better yeah how do we do next it next time, time and, and, yeah. yeah but so that's probably the thing that keeps me kind of energized and um I don't know the thing that drives me nuts. What? I, just trying to hold all the things in my head sure. feels like the biggest challenge right now is right. juggling parenting three kids. And, you know, sometime I got to go to the grocery store and, you know, cook dinner and whatever. And it's like, but I got to place this order and it needs to happen now. And so just right. trying to manage all of sure. life. <laughs> Where Sounds. I have a job, but I'm also not really like going to a job. Right. You don't um, have a separation. Yeah, yeah. It's all just kind of mashed together for right. me. I don't get to go to the office and then sit and just focus on my work. I'm like playing with a baby at the same time. I'm trying to like <laughs> tap on my keyboard over here and ever not slap it and delete everything. Um, so, yeah, that's that's been fun. <laughs> but yeah. we're making it work. Yeah. That also sounds familiar. There's a lot of things yeah. involved in running a business, and as it scales, it's just a lot of stuff. And each of those areas becomes a lot of stuff. Like ordering is way more complex than it was in 2020 because there's yeah. more vendors, there's more products with each of those vendors. More of the quantities become very real, and getting those decisions each right. Each line is, item is a significant is, amount of money, right? And right. I was like training somebody to help me with this at one point or trying to, and, and they were like, oh my gosh, yeah, like I don't want to hit the button on an order that big. Right, you know? right. It's, it becomes significant. If you make a mistake, it can be significant. So the, yeah. the stakes go up and it's not like, like at the very beginning, it's easy. Like, oh, I'll take a couple of this thing and then if they sell, I'll go buy another couple of the things. But that's all the money I got anyway is to be able to buy a couple. So spending 40 bucks to buy two of an item that might be a more, you know, mid-priced kit or something. Like you got two items, you can go into any like yard sale forum and eBay and sell it off if it didn't work. But mm -hmm. when you've got 200 of something or even mm -hmm. 20 of something, that stuff changes. And it's a big deal either way. If you right. you've got a big chunk of something, right. you, that can be great you get, because yeah. you need that right. amount. There be cases where you might have a lot, but you don't have enough. You could right. have twice and you as don't much. Want to miss that and missing that opportunity is big. And but then, then you don't want to go too big, and then you're right. stuck with a bunch of product that isn't moving, and right. that feels like a failure right. too. So right. Yeah. 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 And that is a big mental load. Yeah, that that's the exhausting part. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're always tired. <laughs> <laughs> Must be. Must be. I'll sleep when I'm dead, I guess. Um, <laughs> cool. So I think that kind of covers things. So thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully this was entertaining, enlightening, or I don't know, something. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>